Hello and welcome back to the channel. So I'm back in Scotland, my favourite place and actually if we come to Scotland there is one place above all others which feels like a second home and that's the Isle of Mull. We're trying to come to the Isle of Mull I would say two or three times a year and we've been countless countless times before but we've never been during April May and that that time of the year is puffing time and so one of the trips that we've not done we've done Staffa but we've not done a trip out to Lunga. So today we're on the Taurus Mara and we're off out to Lunga to hopefully get some fantastic photographs of the puffins and the other seabirds that make that little island their home. It's beautiful. It's unseasonably warm. It's beautiful sunshine, but unfortunately that also means it makes difficult photography conditions. Obviously photographing a subject which is black and white in very harsh bright sunshine makes it really quite challenging um, before this trip i've actually bought myself a new lens i've got the 24 to 70 f4 lens not the 2.8 i couldn't quite afford that so i've got the f4 lens um, and i've bought that because what i want to try and get today when we're on on uh, lunga is some um, environmental shots so some shots of the puffins where they're not tight uh, portrait shots like i would normally get but actually show off some of the scenery around them um, and I believe that uh, when you're on Lunga you get really quite close <coughs> to the puffins so that should lend itself to some really really fantastic photographs. So as always come along for the journey and see what I see. We are on Lunga. First thing I'm going to say, the journey over, freezing cold. They stop off at Staffa and then the journey from Staffa to Lunga was really, really cold. And it's, it's a warm day today, so I think on any day you need to wrap up warm for the boat trip. Uh, you, you, once you're on board, once you, you've landed on the island, within seconds we're surrounded by puffins, they're everywhere. And the, their burrows are, are really evident. So it's just a case of looking around, trying to pick out your compositions and enjoying it. So I'm just going to talk you through what I'm doing here at the edge. Um, I've come to the, the cliff edge and I've just found a little spot, lay myself down. And then within a, probably about the space of 30 seconds, one puffin appears, a second puffin appears, a third puffin appears. And you probably might even see them popping up over, over my shoulder. Um, and I'm switching at the moment between the 70 to 200 and predominantly I'm shooting at about 200 and then the 500 mil um, and the 500 mil is producing some some tight portraits what I'm hoping for as, as we move forward is to try and get some some shots of uh, animal in its habitat I want to try and show off the scenery that sits behind it it's absolutely spe uh, spectacular um, and I'm finding at the moment the 70 to 200 is probably the best focal length to use for that. Um, I can zoom out to 70 mil, um, and, and to be honest with you, I don't think I need to go much more than that. If I get to a point where they are a little closer, I'll, I'll consider switching to a wide angle lens and seeing what I can get from that. But as we stand at the minute, absolutely breathtaking, and it's just a case of lying still and waiting for them to appear. Um, and then just taking your time and picking your shots they're not going anywhere you know they're, they're there for some time so you can afford to really take your time there's one popping up just just down here now hey yeah, you can probably see him just popping up over my shoulder oh there's two of them i'm gonna crack on I 
think as always when you come to these places it can be a little bit overwhelming at first there was puffins everywhere when we first arrived and now it's just a case of taking our time and you know we've got four hours on the island so we can really afford to take our time and pick our shots and what a better place to do it it's absolutely beautiful i think we've been blessed with the weather but i would imagine no matter what the weather it's it's stunning on here So what I'm doing here, and let me just explain, I'm actually choosing to shoot through some obstructions. So we've got some beautiful pink flowers on the cliff top, and then we've got puffins that are sitting just below. And half of them are uh, obstructed by the purple flowers, the pink flowers. Oh, he's just moving into a perfect spot. Half of them are, are obstructing the, the puffin, but because the, the, the pink flowers are really quite close to me they're only just causing like a like a pink haze that i'm photographing through and then i've got the beautiful puffin just behind it which is absolutely exquisite and uh, the only thing that would perhaps improve this shot would be the light it's very harsh but actually what i'm doing is i'm underexposing the image by 0 0.7 of a stop um, I've got my aperture at 6.3 and then my shutter speed is at 2500 and that's giving me quite low ISO. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm metering for um, spot highlight sensitive metering. I think I've said that right and what that means is is it's really uh, focusing on the highlights within within the image and it's adjusting the ISO accordingly so I use auto ISO um, and I let the camera do that part and it just allows me to focus on the creativity side in terms of shutter speed and aperture wow we've actually got three three puffins now all in the same frame uh, it was better when it was just one we've got four now <laughs> but I'm not going to complain this is absolutely beautiful Wow, longer. Hard to put into words, but I'll give it a go. I'm currently sat having a picnic, eating a sandwich, with pink pincushion flowers all around me, and probably in excess of 60 puffins, no less than five metres away. What a truly remarkable experience this is. It is absolutely breathtaking. We've been to Skoma, we've been to uh, the Farn Islands in Northumberland. Um, Bempton Cliffs was only a couple of weeks ago and I, I got a couple of stolen shots of, of puffins there. Nothing comes close to this. This is abs... <laughs> you can 
<laughs> it just flew right over my head. Absolutely incredible, incredible place. I actually thought four hours, oh gosh, it's quite a long time to spend on an island. It is going far too fast, far too quickly. We're going to have to leave and I really don't want to. It is incredible. So what we're doing now is we're looking for shots of puffins in flight and if you come to an area that's just above where the burrows are and then you're just looking for birds here's one just looking for birds coming in and then coming into land just on the cliff in front of you and that makes for some really good images if i've got anything decent i'll pop it up on the screen for you to see So I'm trying something a little bit different now. Um, I've had lots of shots of the puffins in lots of different environments, some with a the, with the 500 mil lens, some with the 70 to 200 mil lens. Um, I've not had many with the 24 to 70. And a lot of that is because, in all honesty, you can't get close enough. So what I've done is I've placed my camera just over the way. Um, and it's not that far but i'm not i was nowhere near the burrow but not that far from the burrow and i've placed my camera down with a 2470 on and um it's set at the, the 24 mil end so it's it's nice wide angle shot and what i've got is i've got the um snapbridge app on my phone so the snapbridge app is loaded oh, and he's just coming out now he's just coming out now and so what you can do, and I'm just doing it now because he's just popped out, is via the Snapbridge app, it'll actually still use the um, animal eye tracking. So you, you're not having to worry about your focusing. And he just came out of the burrow then, and I was able to snap a couple of shots. And obviously with it being a, a mirrorless camera and completely silent, it got no idea that that camera was there to take the photograph. There's nothing, no noise to startle it. Um, there will obviously be the fact that there is a camera there and he could he could probably see it but he's he's coming out now he's coming out again oh, it's great it's a really really nice way to do photography so i'm just going to concentrate now and crack on with it So what you find on a, an island like this is you get boatloads of tourists time after time again and um, when they arrive obviously they all gather and the first puffins they see they all huddle around them and they start taking photographs um, and in all honesty I did exactly the same thing I came up the path saw some puffins straight away lay down and started taking photographs um, and actually I would say if I could give you the best piece, of, a best piece of advice for Lunga is to go and explore because actually the further into the island you get the more and more puffins there are um, and this first kind of raft of them here is probably not the, the best however the reason we've come back to this area is there's lots and lots of bluebells here 
um, and I wanted to try and get some photographs of the puffins through the bluebells. I've got them through the pink cushion flowers, those lovely pink flowers, and I wanted to try and get them through the bluebells. So that's why we've come to this area. Um, and another piece of advice, I've just seen lots and lots of the tourists come then, all got cameras, all stood on the cliff top, all stood up photographing the animal down towards it. And if, if, if I was to pick up one piece of advice that I felt improved my photography no end as the minute I implemented it, it was to get down at the eye level of the subject. So wherever the eye level is of the subject you're photographing, that's the position you want to be, or indeed below it, but never really above it. The minute you're above it, looking down on it, you kind of make the subject appear smaller um, and subservice, subservient to you. And also, it's a it, it's a viewpoint that people often see them from. So that you know, all animals. When we're walking around and we're looking at them, we're looking down onto them. So that's the kind of the viewpoint that you see of them. The minute you get down onto the eye level of the subject and you take the photograph, it transforms your image. It's a completely different image and something different to what other people are taking. So there's, yeah, it does, it becomes personal. You're absolutely right. So I'd say that's the, the number one tip for any photographer, whether you're starting out, whether you've been photographing for 25 years, get down low, get down on the eye level of the subject. And that brings us to the end of an absolutely memorable and remarkable day. Um, Taurus Mara, what a treat to go out to Lunga, spend four hours in very close company of some of the most beautiful birds on the planet, in my opinion, the puffin. They're absolutely sensational. What an incredible little bird they are. So full of character. Opportunities to photograph them in lots of different uh, environments. Hopefully even got some photographs of them in flight. Um, and then we just had the, the, the hour journey back uh, on board the boat. I'm not going to lie, I had a little sleep. It was a hell of a workout. Um, carrying all that ca camera equipment and, and photographing for four hours solid. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Um, if you're not yet subscribed, please can give it, consider giving it a, a try. It doesn't cost you anything. A lot of people have this perception because it uses the word subscription that you have to pay for it. Um, you just have to have a YouTube account and then click subscribe. Costs you absolutely nothing but does wonders for my channel. So if you've not yet subscribed, please consider it. Um, if you want to share this video on any form of social media, it puts the video out there and gets in touch with more people. So more the merrier. And if you see me out and about, come and say hello. Many have done today and it's been really, really nice meeting lots and lots of my viewers. And until next time, ta -ra.